Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots. We look at your shills, death slicers, pests, vassals, minions, meat sacks. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to go to Nigeria. And uh, things are really getting uh, pretty interesting uh, there, to say the least, uh, as we have this uh, major clusterfuck uh, in Africa. And uh, this is true for several reasons right now. The uh, uh, most prominent one, of course, is that uh, theoretically uh, Boko Haram, uh, which in incidentally means no to Western education uh, in their language, uh, Boko Haram is now purportedly uh, declaring uh, allegiance to ISIS uh, in, uh, in the Middle East. And, uh, of course, uh, this is what uh, we've seen happen before with Al-Qaeda. And uh, as many pundits, including myself, have pointed out, uh, this is how it worked. Boko Haram will now have uh, that much more credibility uh, than they did before and become that much more of a prominent terrorist group. And uh, they love that kind of shit. So, uh, so they're going big time now. And uh, it's probably a good move for them because uh, as far as public relations go, uh, most Westerners uh, don't care anymore about the uh, 200 schoolgirls that were uh, kidnapped. Uh, incidentally, uh, most of them are, were never recovered and uh, were, became uh, wives to uh, these Boko Haram uh, soldiers. So, uh, so anyway, that passing fad of being uh, heartbroken about these poor Nigerian uh, school children, well, that's all behind us now. So now we can worry about the fact that they're part of uh, ISIS. And in true ISIS fashion, uh, recently, they posted a video uh, chopping off some heads. So, uh, so sounds like they're uh, they're with ISIS now. And uh, the other part of this uh, story uh, recently is that uh, two neighboring countries, Chad and Niger, uh, just launched uh, huge offensives, uh, both land and air, against Boko Haram. So uh, there's not much in the uh, Western press right now about that, but um, that's kind of a big deal. But um, that's been, that's been going on for a while uh, because there's been a, a, a African coalition force uh, operating, but also because recently, because of the uh, participation of these neighboring countries uh, in efforts against Boko Haram, uh, Boko Haram uh, was also notable recently for attacking all of those neighboring countries. Uh, in February, uh, this just this past month, they attacked uh, Chad, Niger, and Cameroon. And, uh, the usual stuff, kidnappings, bombings, firefights, uh, suicide attacks, and um, a lot of it is, is symbolic, just making a, a, a step into those countries uh, to prove that they can uh, spread uh, their violence and their message uh, at, at, at will. And interestingly enough, and I'll, I'll attach some of those videos below, I've reported before about uh, a U.S. presence there already. So the, the United States is involved, but uh, certainly, uh, Nigeria is not as crucial to the United States as it used to be. Uh, and in fact, there, there was a contingency plan if Nigerian oil supplies were threatened for U.S. troops to be uh, stationed there, uh, essentially invade and take over part of the country. But uh, since that time, particularly because of the shale oil boom and all that, uh, Nigerian uh, oil is uh, negligent as far as uh, how much the United States uh, depends on them. And then we also have an interesting situation because once again we find that uh, the U.S. and Iran are uh, on the same side and uh, oddly enough are both helping to fight uh, Boko Haram in, um, in Nigeria. So uh, once again uh, these claims of Netanyahu about uh, uh, Iran being a sponsor of terrorism uh, around the globe is uh, certainly extremely exaggerated if not an out, out and out lie. Um, they have proxy forces um, in their in their strategic neighborhood, and uh, just like everybody else. But uh, Iran has had consultations with uh, all these West African countries affected by Boko Haram and offered their help. And, and in fact, uh, Iran's deputy foreign minister said he is confident the group could be defeated with collective action, um, similar to what we see in going on in the Middle East. And that's one of the things that strikes me about what's going on in Nigeria. Uh, not so much the differences between what's going on there in the Middle East, but uh, what the similarities are. First of all, we have uh, the possibility that uh, a insurgent group, in this case Boko Haram, are being used for destabilization 
efforts, and we also have this. Uh, uh, we have them associated with ISIS now. We've seen them use brutal tactics all along, even before their association with ISIS. And then uh, we also have uh, the, the fact that it's spilled over into to all these other uh, neighboring countries, and it's a, on a pretty large scale. Like, apparently, the body count for last year is somewhere in the vicinity of 10,000 just for last year. Um, over a million refugees, and of course, uh, thousands abduct, abducted, and uh, very uh, high profile uh, in the media, these uh, massacres and entire towns destroyed. So Boko Haram uh, certainly has a, a brutality all their own uh, that will go uh, nicely with their new association with ISIS, and they, maybe they could compete with each other. Um, but uh, what we have here is a, a sequence of events and uh, let's see, uh, starting at, uh, at the end of January, so in the first three months of 2015, essentially we had uh, Cameroon, Chad, Niger, Nigeria, uh, all involved with an 8,700-man uh, force to go after Boko Haram. So the Cameroon, Chad, and Niger are putting together that force. And Chad, troops from Chad are already operating in Nigeria against uh, Boko Haram. So... Um, well, like I say, in the following month, we had these uh, reprisal attacks uh, from uh, uh, Boko Haram. And uh, it, there's a lot of other uh, complexities in this situation as well. First of all, we, as I pointed out, we have the United States involved in some destabilization efforts. And uh, once again, it, it involves the uh, U.S. Embassy. And uh, so that's one of the things that's problemat problematic, and that brings up embassies like Benghazi and why events unfold the way they do. Um, it's not so much uh, all these fuck-ups that everybody likes to talk about. It's the fact that U.S. embassies are used for uh, subterfuge in all these countries they're in. And the U.S. embassy in Nigeria, according to WikiLeaks documents, is operating a, a base for surveillance on the Nigerian government. And they uh, support um, and fund insurgents and are sponsoring divisive propaganda and political blackmail and bribery. So that's what's coming out of the U.S. Embassy in Nigeria in this uh, complex situation we have in that country of Boko Haram. Once again, it's hard to say uh, whether America is playing uh, both sides or not. And uh, we certainly see some affinities uh, to both the Ukraine and Libya uh, using the, the U.S. Embassy for these destabilization efforts and supporting these, uh, these radical groups. And uh, there's clear connections to CIA and Saudi Arabian funding once again. So once again, we, here we have a country, um, we have Netanyahu pointing out this vast global network of uh, Iran uh, terrorists. And yet once again, we have Iran in this situation working with the United States, um, being constructive. And yet we have uh, Saudi Arabian funding uh, uh, behind uh, the insurgency in, uh, in, uh, in Nigeria. And uh, there's also suggestions that uh, uh, Chad may actually be a major backer of Boko Haram. And that's one of the interesting scandals that goes along with this, this story. Um, because we, we have the, the, the Chad Basin and this lake in the Borno State, which is where a lot of this uh, activity is and where Boko Haram was born. Um, and there's been uh, recent discoveries of more oil reserves. So now we have oil reserves in other parts of Nigeria. And um, there's been a certain amount of uh, mystery as, as to who's been uh, arming Boko Haram, although we have tactics that are similar to the Sunni al-Qaeda. So there seems to be some affinity with Saudi Arabia, or more likely Pakistan. So the likely characters involved here, uh, as usual, the CIA, Pakistan, and Saudi Arabia, uh, helping to foment this situation. And uh, there was a, a phantom ceasefire. And that, this actually ties back to this last January phantom ceasefire brokered by Chad that resulted in this recent Boko Haram offensive. And that's another reason why there's suspicions that Chad might be involved because they, they have designs uh, you know, on developing this oil. And, and in fact, the 2010 survey showed that Lake Chad had a vast oil reserves. And since then, Cameroon, Niger, Chad, and Nigeria have all uh, been interested in developing this region. In fact, Cameroon, Niger, and Chad have all already been developing in that region. So there's another interesting thing about this. Nigeria hasn't been able to 
uh, develop any oil in that region because of the threat of Boko Haram. And yet we have Cameroon, Niger, and Chad who have all uh, managed to access and develop around uh, Lake Chad. Uh, although certainly that's changing with these new Boko Haram attacks. And, uh, and France was the original colonial master uh, in, uh, in Nigeria, so we'll, we'll probably see some uh, affinities to uh, what's going on in other uh, uh, former French colonies. And, we, and in fact, we've already seen that in places like Chad and, and Mali. And once again, in Nigeria, we find this, uh, the results of the uh, colonial um, uh, colonialism and these artificial borders that are created. So we have uh, 200 different ethnicities along with a split between Christians and Muslims. And, uh, so these are uh, problems that were bound to uh, resurface uh, due to this post-colonial world. And, uh, and so, uh, so it, another thing that connects Boko Haram, to, of course, to Saudi Arabia is that uh, they are a Sunni jihadist group. And uh, they have connections with Libya and Chad, and that's where a lot of the the weapons are coming from as well, besides uh, what they're getting supplied uh, from other other sources. So uh, definitely uh, uh, qualifies as a clusterfuck and uh, something we need to keep our, our eye on now, particularly as this war seems to be expanding uh, with Boko Haram making strikes in all these neighboring countries. And now all these uh, neighboring countries uh, launching a, a major offensive and uh, it'll be interesting to see what it takes to uh, to uh, bring this into the limelight uh, in Western media. And um, the other thing that makes uh, this interesting, of course, and similarities of the Middle East is we have, you know, ExxonMobil, Shell, and Chevron all have oil uh, interests there, uh, however uh, limited they might be right now, as well as, as the new American military command for Africa, AFRICOM, operating in the region. And... Um, so we could uh, end up with a destabilization and breakup, uh, much like we uh, could find in some of these other hot spots with all the, the same uh, cast of characters and bad actors. Um, and in fact, uh, in 2006, uh, uh, documents from the United States State Department predicted that J uh, Nigeria would disintegrate by 2015. Huh, 2015. That sounds familiar. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?